Uh, welcome. This is the September 1st uh, edition of European Docs Office Hours for Jenkins. Uh, today on our agenda, we have some action items, um, update on Google Summer of Code, uh, some info about the Jenkins 2.361.1 uh, release, and uh, I think it comes along with that. Uh, we have some recently added blog posts about DevOps World 2022 in the Jenkins blog, which I wanted to point out. Um, and then a couple of other topics from previous sessions, the search improvements on Jenkins.io and the commercial support page that's been proposed by Gavin. Uh, so uh, just to start us off, Mark, uh, would you like to go uh, give us an update on the action items? Yeah, so the archive, the docs mailing list, no progress. The blog posts, um, you can delete the She Code Africa contribute -thon. That one really is complete. Okay, great. That's it. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, next up, Vihan, would you like to share uh, what's been going on with Google Summer of Code? Mark mentioned you were talking about the docs generator um, and was able to add that. So yeah, just wanted to see what you had to share. Um, yes, so I was able to get the pull request for the pipeline search documentation generator done. And uh, we merged it a couple of days back, but it was uh, breaking the site to add some errors. And I, basically, I fixed that by uh, writing the code to generate the parameter folder. And yeah, even that was merged like a half an hour back. And Mark also created a pull request to test it on Jenkins.io which I think has failed again because of that particular uh, reason. So not able to debug what the error is, but it's not able to find that particular parameter file that I've created. So we'll have to debug it more, but I can show you the result on my local machine, uh, like what it looks like, and maybe we can uh, look into it together if that's fine. Sure. Yeah, let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen behind and you can uh, take over. Um, is it visible? Yep. So I'll just uh, run it locally first. And so basically, the error, I think, uh, this is the build error that is facing and is saying no such file directory, which basically, basically should exist according to the local file that I have. And we'll be able to see that in a moment when the site runs. So I'm not sure whether this is happening because we created a new a new folder inside the file structure of Jenkins.io. Um, but you can maybe test it with something else. Yep. So the local site is running. And if we go ahead and Look into multi branch. Basically, the loading time for this this page required around twenty seconds before it becomes stable, or the JavaScript going on and the browser will crash often. But it requires only a couple of seconds now to get there. And for example, uh, with the configuration I've added, many of these have been uh, abstracted to the new pages. One of them is from SCM. And if we click on that, we'll see another list of all the SCM providers. And uh, we can basically go ahead and check out some more configurations that we have done. And within this, something like this. So all these are connected within themselves. And if you want to, basically, it has given the error the first of param ASCII doc that we had created. And if you can check the config, which was present that separated it, we can maybe find out the location and see if it is working correctly on the local machine. So the backlog pull request, right? So let's see if we, yeah. So this is common for what, okay. I think I can find it now. So yeah, this one. So this is separated correctly as far as my knowledge. Yeah. 
So this is working fine on my local machine. I'm not sure what is going wrong with the um, with the side generation. But uh, any any thoughts on this, Mark? I'm wondering if maybe it's not in the all ASCII that was just generated. Let's let's take a quick look at that. All right. So um, actually, the ones that the the copy that I'm showing right now is uh, this, these entire docs are taken from the all ASCII or zip and unzipped over here. So these are not generated. That's, that's the one that you downloaded from the most recent build. Right. Right. From the hmm. pull request two one one. Okay. So. Backlog. Okay. Uh, we can walk through the procedure again, I guess, to double so, check. But, but what file were you expecting it to be in? Because I don't see a file in the copy of all ASCII.zip that I downloaded called backlog, back, anything more than just backlog.adoc. Um, so when we unzip it, it will have a folder which is known as params in it. And after that, uh, so basically that fold, particular folder will cons consist of this file over here. Yeah, so backlog pull request SCM source.adoc does exist in the copy that I see and it's, and it's got some content, it's 8K byte. So okay. yeah, okay. But you say that should be in params. Yeah, it is, okay. Hmm. Okay, so then, so so what that means, Vihan, is something something else is causing it not to be found. Is it not in the correct location, or? Hmm. Okay, so it says no such file or directory content slash doc slash pipeline steps params backlog pull request SCM source. So is it possible that that is not being unpacked in that location? Um, basically, uh, earlier when we fetch external resource, as far as I can recall, it's um, it calls the, okay, so it unzips it in the steps directory itself. And when we do that, uh, uh, the params folder comes within it. And if it's not able to find it, then I'm wondering how it is able to name this file correctly in the first place. So uh, from where is this name coming if it's not able to find it in the first place? Because I've not linked it. Uh, it's not that uh, the link is coming out to be like this. And basically this is happening at compile time. So it won't even know if it is, exists or not, uh, if that particular link exists or not. If that's being linked, if that makes sense, I guess. So I'm not sure how it knows. Uh, if this, uh, like the name of this particular ASCII doc in the first place, if it's not able to locate it. So is the is the unzip that's being used honoring directories? Um, I'm not sure what script is used to unzip. I use the standard Linux unzip command on my machine, which basically gets the folder out as well. And like I can demonstrate them by moving to Hmm. Yeah, and and it looks like. So I can basically remove all the ASCII docs that we have in this directory. I have the zip version sitting in this directory itself, and also remove the params folder. And if we do, okay, so this all ASCII zip is a new one. And when I do an zip, I should basically have a params folder sitting here. Okay. Have. So not exactly sure what's going on with the ASCII doc. Uh, is it happening because we are creating a new folder, which indeed also requires a new URL lo location on the site? Or that, that, is it flexible in that sense? I didn't think that that was the, well, back to the message that it's, it's displaying. Let's read that. It was saying, no bundler, no fetch external resources, no such file or directory. Okay, so. Okay, so it's.
fetch external resources. Okay, so the thing it's downloading is ci.jenkins.io job infra job pipeline step stock generator job master last successful build artifact all ascii dot zip. Mm -hmm. so and if uh, I download that same thing. Not sure what the other things are. Not sure what these also stand for, but. The and main, the, go ahead. The, the main, uh, the folder that we want is the first line itself. Not sure what the second, third, and the fourth line are doing. What, what they are touching basically. Yeah, and I think if we read that script, we should be able to see what it's, what it's doing with resources, right? So files fetcher dot new process with reset resources and okay, it looks like the the four arguments are the origin the destination the front matter and the zip destination so origin, that URL, destination, so it copies it into content underscore temp, front mm -hmm. matter, none required, and then dip, zip destination, content doc pipeline steps. That seems all quite reasonable. So let's see if I run it. Um, do you think uh, that it is appending the name params over here? So, uh, not sure this, this happened to me once as well, but basically giving so it's not able to find the end point of this. Maybe putting it like this, I don't think it would make a difference though. But it's not able to find that particular ASCII doc. And the URL mentioned over here is the correct one, the one we expect. I'm not sure why it's not finding it after mentioning the correct URL. Yeah, so it's now it does look like it's using Ruby to perform the unzip, right? And so if there's if the Ruby zip package does not honor directories, that could be a problem. But it seems like we would see that if we ran scripts slash external fetch external ourselves. Okay. I'm running it now just to see. Okay, and it says needs to load the package name Faraday. It's been a while since I did anything with Ruby. Okay, Ruby gem package. I oh, have yeah. same same error <laughs> um, for me as well. Right, so it's. I think what we want, what is Ruby gems? So we say gem space install. Install Faraday. I uh, had a look, a search within github.com on this repo to see if it was called elsewhere, but unfortunately there is just one occurrence in the make file and another one in the docker file. But that's all, because I was wondering if um, you have the error, Vihan, uh, maybe somebody else should have it for other resources, but that's the only place where it is called, so false positive. Right, right. So,
All right. Now, is there a way to install a gem as a an individual user? Fine, I'll do the dangerous thing. Hmm. Um, maybe it's stupid, but could it be just a transient and temporary ephemeral, whatever, error? Uh, if we relaunch the build, would it fail the very same way? I I would expect it to fail the same way, okay. just but but it's a it's cheap to try it. Let's do it because it can be running in parallel while we're investigating other things. So I've launched it. PR5404 on Jenkins.io is the one that's evaluating it. And the same failure will be visible on the, on the master branch. I could start that as well, because then we've got two different places to check it. Yeah, good idea. So uh, what command does it use to un unzip? Uh, Ruby, the one you mentioned right now. Uh, that ask your question again, Vihan. Yes, Ruby zip is the thing that's performing the unzip. I assume it would honor directories. I would be surprised if it did not. Now, mm -hmm. is there a way we could check that? Actually, there is. I can probably go. Can I go to? that pull request and look inside its workspace. I don't know if I can because it's a pipeline job workspaces. Okay, so it's pending another, well, let me try it locally on my computer. So Vihan, the technique that you used locally that did work successfully for you was you did you modified something to allow make all to not download the file externally um uh, could it come again how did you run the how, what steps did you take to run it locally you downloaded all ascii.zip and then what did you do yes. uh, then i commented out the fetch external resources part for this particular repository and okay. I shifted all ASCII zip dot, uh, dot zip in the pipeline steps folder, and then I run unzip all ASCII dot zip. Okay, so so the technique was comment out the all ASCII line thirty five through forty. in fetch external resources, got it. And then download all ASCII.zip and unpack it. Did you unpack it all the way into the content doc pipeline steps? Um, yes, that was okay. a destination. All right, so hang on just a minute while I do that then. Oh, uh, okay, I shall stop sharing my screen in case you wanna. Okay, great. Okay, and the location where you unpacked it was content docs pipeline or doc pipeline steps. And I don't have a params file there right now. So if I say unzip, Okay, now I have the params folder. And then you can run the make run script for- Oh, oh, you use make run. 
okay, I think that uh, may be the, the magic. I need, you need, I believe you need to use make all. Yes, I tried that. So make all builds it, but it does not run it. And then after make all, uh, when it basically fetches everything and gets everything done, then I run make run. So to test it, but basically make all was also running successfully because uh, in this case, we have anyways commented out the fetch external resources part, right? So uh, that couldn't be caught uh, even if we use this method. And if we don't, do not comment that out, we will get the older ones. But I think now if we, uh, since the uh, uh, latest in the repository is updated now, so last accessible points towards the new documentation, we can try out the fetch external resources script itself. Right, we could could we, we could update fetch fetch external resources to pull from the from the pull request or from the uh, what do you call it? Access yes, well, and and it's in fact it's already doing that, isn't it? Oh uh, yes, it should. So maybe we can try commenting that out and removing all the ASCII doc that is sitting from that unzip thing. So I'll try it out. It won't take much time in this. Make make all takes some time because it's uh, fetching a lot of resources through that time. But yeah, so so but because I'm sitting at So if I if I take the if I do a make all from anywhere, it will fetch the external resources. Now, right. okay. So let's get that added. Oh yes, the same error as the pull request. Uh, okay, no good. Sorry. Go ahead, Vihan, excuse me. Right, the, exactly the same error line that we were seeing in the pull request. In the okay. same file as well. Back Good, back. so you've got, you've got at least enough information to do investigation that you can check locally. Uh, yes, basically the fetch external resource itself is not working. So uh, when the Ruby is fetching that and unzipping it locally, that is where the problem is arising. So we need to we need to investigate the Ruby part, I believe. The way it is okay. in the So while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and revert the the change to the pipeline steps doc generator so that we don't break the build of the Jenkins.io site. Are you okay with that? So you can do your investigation on a branch. Um, sure. So I, I can do that. And uh, I believe those changes would be needed in Jenkins.io and not uh, pipeline steps of generator. So whenever we make those changes first in Jenkins.io, then we can uh, uh, re, uh, recreate that pull request from PSTG. I see. Okay. So your thinking is that the likely fix is no longer in pipeline steps doc generator, it will actually be on the Jenkins.io build process. Great. 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 Uh, anything else to add behind Mark, or is that, does that take care of the Google Summer of Code update for the time being? Uh, um, I'll oh, go ahead, Vihan. Um, nothing else from my side. Okay. Great. Um, is it all right that if we move on in the agenda? Uh, so, uh, next thing that is on our agenda today is the Jenkins uh, September LTS, which will be 2.361.1, um, along with the release, uh, Faith has asked for a blog post about Jenkins for the Continuous Delivery Foundation blog. Uh, I'm working on that currently and have been able to get a lot of um, feedback and suggestions from the Jenkins team, developers, um, community at large. So. Uh, I've been able to revamp and add a lot more information there, and uh, I'll be sharing it as a pull request. And once I've actually submitted the pull request, I have to uh, double check on what 
kind of formatting and file type they use. Um, since it does seem to be different from the regular Jenkins uh, ASCII docs. So uh, once that's been submitted, I will share it here and uh, with the community as, as a whole. Um, it's a high level blog post. It's uh, not necessarily a technical document for the ins and outs of the Java 11 requirement, but more just to see milestones in a historical perspective of where Jenkins started and where it is to where it is now and where it's going. Um, that is also going to include some information that I've been able to source from uh, Basil's previous blog post about requiring Java 11 uh, and with the amount of content that's going to be in the change log and upgrade guide, uh, there should be more than enough information to go over and uh, check out with the new uh, LTS. Uh, the September LTS is going to require Java 11. As we mentioned, uh, it's also going to bring support for Java 17 to it. So uh, that's moving from preview to general access. Uh, so that will be another fun uh, new update for users to try out. And the change, change log and upgrade guide itself is open for review. Uh, at this point, we've got the backports and a lot of the other pieces added to it. We're just waiting on one or two other uh, potential items. But for the most part, that's going to be uh, ready to uh, send out when the release is ready. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out on Jenkins.io is the fact that uh, with DevOps World 2022 approaching so soon, uh, we have some contributors uh, and other posts on the Jenkins community blog talking about uh, their various topics and ideas that they're going to be bringing up at DevOps World. Um, it's really exciting. This is back to in-person for DevOps World, which is an, a nice return. And with everything that uh, I'm aware of that's going to be happening, I uh, wish I was going that much more now. Uh, but uh, my team's going to be there, and I am so excited to see what everyone brings to the table and shares. Um, the search improvements for Jenkins.io uh, is essentially the search results right now are not as good as they could be. Uh, some keywords don't show the results you would expect, uh, but this is in part due to the fact that the Algolia search is, a is older. Um, right now we're using the legacy scraper. It needs to be updated to be uh, more modern, and this will take some time to develop and, and figure out and configure. Um, it looks to be something that's specific to the credentials that uh, right now, uh, Mark and Gavin Mogan are the two that have those credentials. So uh, thankfully Mark's already created a GitHub issue for tracking, uh, but this will take some time to get going and, and get this uh, straightened out. Um, the last topic that I have on the agenda is the commercial support page proposal, which was shared by Gavin. Uh, in July. Uh, it's been a little bit since there's been any updates or discussion on it, so I just want to make sure that that's still visible. Uh, this is something that would greatly benefit uh, not only Jenkins as a whole, but the user base and the community at large. Um, the idea of having an updated support page would lend itself to getting that direct communication, be getting that easier uh, support and even expanding the options of what support means. Stuff like training, certifications, other commercial opportunities uh, are all possible. And we wanna make sure that this has the best uh, set of information and, and support that we can provide for anyone that might be looking to use it. Uh, so uh, if you have any ideas or want to get in on the discussion, uh, that link is in the agenda and available on the community.jenkins.io site. Um, was there any other topics that anyone wanted to add or go over here that we didn't mention or any other items they'd like to share? Um, yes, so basically uh, one thing that I could think to rectify the error was in case we are not able to uh, see why the unzip thing is not working, what we can do is uh, instead of keeping that params folder within all ASCII.zip, we create another zip for it, maybe known as params.zip. And then we unzip it. And since that is a folder, it won't have any issues that we are facing now. And yeah, it should work. So that should be like, that should be the green path maybe. And figuring out why the folder is not getting extracted is the priority now. So I'll maybe work on that. 
Okay, thank you very much, Vihan. And um, I just wanted to say thank you for all of the continued work you're doing on the, the documentation. Uh, as a docs person myself, I, I really appreciate the fact of trying to simplify and uh, you know c condense the bloat on these pages a lot. So um, I love it, keep it up. This is amazing. So thank you so much for the continued innovation and contributing. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Okay, uh, and with that, Mark, I think we can stop the recording. It will be available in 24 to 48 hours. Thank you, Zbinek. Was there anything else that you wanted to know? Um, you had... Yeah, so um, I was just listening on, on this uh, uh, pipeline generation, and I think is this problem with the subfolder it's really just that we need to create the subfolders recursively. So there's like one line of Ruby code missing because we're trying to write into a subdirectory that wasn't created yet. So that should be a fairly easy fix for uh, for the Jenkins IO. So Vihan, if you want to submit it, I've posted it in the, in the chat, what the, the change that needs to be done, but yeah. Yes, and with the hope that there is only one folder missing, because if you do that and it corrects the first error, then maybe you will have another subfolder which will have to be created and so on. I don't know. Yeah, so the code is already going recursively through all the files, but it's not, it's assuming that they're all in one directory. Which... Mm -hmm. And so, so Shibenek, the, the perplexity for me is where would that change be applied in the fetch external resources? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so there's there's already this loop that goes through all the files. And I guess we just need to do this one and maybe add some imports. I'm not sure about it. Yeah. OK, um, maybe we would find the magic parameter set which would allow um, Ruby to unzip while creating uh, necessary directories. Yeah, it's possible that there's some some Ruby library that's like on a higher level than this simple zip API. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So, Jbinek, I think I'm understanding. I hadn't looked at the code. It says, um, if downloading a zip file, extract it, unzipping to, and it does a maker of the zip destination, but then iterates exactly as you said over each file. Yes, exactly. And then on, on line 127, it just extracts into possibly non existing directory. So, we need this equivalent of the make dear minus p mm -hmm. to to create the folder safely. So Vihan, do you right. want to create the pull request with this fix or should I take take care of it? Um uh, it would be great if you can, I guess. Okay, um, cool. If, if it's possible. Mark, have you reported the pull request already? Uh I've I've submitted the pull request to revert it, uh, so the pull okay. request is being evaluated now. But it hasn't finished evaluation. So what we can what we can also do is uh, for testing, just say that we want to download it not from the last master build, but from like fixed uh, fixed uh, build number eight hundred or whatever was was the number where the pull request was applied and we can test it independently on the build of Jenkins IO because we probably don't want to block building the website by, right. by this. Okay, so, uh, sorry to interrupt, Spinning. So um, could you do another pull request maybe with your proposed fix? And yeah, then so Vihan my, my suggestion would... is to uh, yeah. create a pull request that would uh, Pull uh, a fixed version of yep. the ASCII doc, an old one, mm -hmm. and it would contain this fix so that we can verify that it actually works. Yes. And, and then we have after we have a preview rebase. build, we revert the part that fixes the ASCII doc, point it back to 
uh, the lit last built of master, and then we can independently merge the ASCII doc generator for request. Because this this will only make the uh, Jenkins I/O part more robust. So it's it's not uh, necessary to merge the Hans changes first. Yep, got it. I think even even more that Zbinek, if you can submit your pull request relatively quickly, it will evaluate with exactly what's out on the on the system right now. And whereas the master wrench is failing, your pull request, if successful, will then be able to fix the master branch when we merge it. So I'd say Zbinek, let's have you do your your first choice is let's have have you submit your pull request let's see if it fixes the master branch if it does then i can throw away my proposed revert of behan's changes on pipeline steps doc generator and we we've got the solution then okay so that one's not the revert is not merged yet it is not that's correct okay then then i will just do my proposed change and see if that helps okay cool Right, and the folder part that we want to create, I'll just paste it in the chat in case. You know. So the, the one we have to pass to the parameter, find out the name, and this is the file part that we want to create. Yeah, exactly. So so if we add this Ruby code to make the unzipping recursive, then this folder should be created automatically and it should also be uh, future proof in case you add more subfolders in the future, then that should be no problem. Great. Yeah. Great. So, so the way I'm interpreting that, Spinek will have, will, will, if you're okay with it, let's give it, say, one or two hours. Yep. And if in the course of the next two hours you successfully sum you submit a pull request, we'll watch for it and merge it. If after two hours, we haven't seen it. I'm going to assume that something got in your way and okay, then yeah. we'll revert the pipeline step stock generator and we can try again on another day. Yep. Would that be okay with you, Spinek? Yep, definitely. Great. It's not that it's not that the two hours is some magical deadline. I'm not trying to put pressure on you. It's <laughs> yeah. rather, rather that I, I want to be sure we have an expiration time so I don't leave the Jenkins.io build process broken for an extended period. OK. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for joining very much. <laughs> OK. Well, I, unless anyone has anything else they'd like to talk about, share, or discuss, we think we might be able to stop the recording. And it will this time it will actually stop and will be available.